r slash ask reddit what cultural shift happened without people noticing the increase in flakiness it used to be when you made plans with someone they kept them now if you don't constantly check in and remind them they will assume they no longer are invited forget about it this is one of my biggest pet peeves I'm old enough to have organized going out with friends before everyone had cell phones. You'd better show up within a few minutes of the agreed upon time or we'd assume you weren't coming and you'd get left behind. Now everyone has to constantly check in and instead of meeting at the pub at 7 we end up meeting at a house party at 9.30 with no food when all I wanted to do was enjoy a burger with some friends. Work attire slowly becoming more and more relaxed. My father is a real conservative dude and how he lives his life. Dresses. ETC but duck was he thrilled when he longer had to wear a blazer, tie, and trench coat everywhere in the winter. This is actually the opposite in my profession as a mechanic. Shirts with collars, tucked in. Neat belt. Have to match your boots. Seems like when I started years ago you could show up in worn out Levi's and a plain white t-shirt and you'd be golden. I feel a sudden need to walk into your place of work, loudly criticize the dress code in the presence of whatever manager made that rule, and then declare I'm taking my business somewhere where mechanics look like mechanics. I want to make this a hobby, just go around complaining about shit that inconveniences workers, just undo all the snooty complaints of other customers who expect to be waited on hand and foot, stop ruining it for those of us who only want to be waited on pinky finger. People dropping by to visit without notifying you they're coming. When I was a kid, it was so exciting when people came by just to say hi, and we loved it. Now, when the doorbell rings and it's not pizza, UPS, or Jimmy John's, we are pretty sure someone is there to kill us. Normalizing online dating. When it was new, everyone thought it would get you murdered. But now, tons of people do it. Yep, I met my wife on MSN Messenger through browsing profiles like 15 years ago. We were ashamed that we met online and would make up stories about how we met to tell people. Don't have to do that anymore. And if not a fear of murder, there was a stigma to it. Oh, you're looking for dates online? Must be some kind of loser who can't get dates in the real world. My husband's mom can never know we met on AOL. We're in too deep with our lies even though it's widely accepted these days. The ease of being able to just look something up on the spot. The idea of going to a library or searching through books to find the answer to that random thing that's nagging at you is almost unthinkable now that we have Google and Wikipedia. I love how we can just read through entire Wikipedia entries on very specific subjects like shell structures of deep sea radiolarians just on our phones or even read entire PhD theses from some university on other side of the world. I heard someone comment that Wikipedia is the greatest advancement in human history. It seems silly until you sit down and think about the fact that we've built a free repository of information that contains a thousand years of knowledge that can be readily accessed and searched with a mere push of a button. People in the year 5000 would busy themselves with searching for the location of the mythical Wikipedia, the greatest library of knowledge in all human history in year 2017 which vanished with no ruins. People's independence with regard to directions. It's rare now to stop and ask someone how to get somewhere, and we tend to take GPS navigation for granted. The transition from maps to map quest to GPS units to smartphones which built navigation into our pockets happened so quickly. And yet people are still afraid of getting lost. Well if my phone dies and I don't have a charger, I'm going to be lost. I'm pretty sure that if my phone were to die on the way to the grocery store, I'd pull over and hug the nearest tree, maybe set my car on fire to signal for help. Constant availability. Used to be I'd try to call a friend and it would ring and ring and ring and they'd have no idea I was trying to reach them. Since caller it didn't exist yet, I just figured they weren't home and kept trying. These days if I left my phone to just ring and ring with no voicemail and no return call, not answering texts, people would probably start to panic and worry about me. Somehow it just became the norm to be constantly reachable no matter where you are and when it is. Calling texting you're at someone's house instead of ringing the doorbell. What if the wrong person answers the door? What if their doorbell isn't working and you end up standing there for ages like an idiot? It's honestly flabbergasting how many people's doorbells don't work. 
probably more than half in my experience. Lot easier to just text call instead of pressing the button and listening intently to see if it actually rang lol. Pizza delivery guy here. Took me about a week to give up on doorbells and just knock on every door. Solve so much hassle. My gf showed me a meme earlier today. Gist was. 1996. Parents say don't trust anybody or anything on the internet. Present day. Parents ask if you heard about obviously untrue thing x on Facebook today. I've seen similar ones along the lines of. 1996. Parents say not to get rides from strangers or meet anyone online 2017. Gets rides from strangers found online. The rise of the internet meme followed by its gradual acceptance into mainstream culture is also a pretty big shift that's happened in recent years. FaceTime. Video calls were supposed to be something from the Jetsons and it would be so huge that we'd all have a video call phone in our homes. Then one day I realized someone was FaceTiming at the grocery store. It was just a normal thing. I re-watched Star Trek TNG and just noticed that. For the first time in my 20 years of fandom, I didn't think anything of them carrying around tablets and smartphone looking devices. Back when the show was new, this was futuristic. No paper, just digital tablets. Now I caught myself thinking, oh those tablets look so bulky, the iPad is much smaller now. I think it's funny how in basically every show where there was a sort of facetiming, the screen was ducking huge, like it would take up half a wall in an entire room. I can see how that might play better on film because it's easier for the audience to see. But why did people think that would be desirable? Who wants to see their friend's face on a 7 foot screen? Not so long ago, the thought of test tube babies horrified people. They were lobbying to have it stopped. IVF is now an everyday thing and nobody really questions it. I was conceived in a lab in Johns Hopkins via IVF in May 1990. My very catholic grandmother was very against it, even though I was to be her only son's only child. Even though the church was against it, she warmed up over the course of the pregnancy and never again considered the circumstances of my birth. It's remarkable how all the rationale for opposing something suddenly vanishes when one forms a relationship with a real live person who benefits from that something. I think humanity as a whole would be better off if we honestly put ourselves in each other's shoes more often. As a teacher, students with constant access to their grades, and parents with constant demands. Toward the end of my high school career, parents receive access to all grades and upcoming assignments on our online portal. Luckily my parents trusted me to get things done, but it caused a lot of stress for some students. Protesting about petrol prices. The whole of Europe was up in arms with blockades everywhere because the price was getting to one pound a litre. They went down and we'd won then the media stopped covering it and no one gave a shit when it went way past that just a few months later. Pretty much this way with everything else. Mass shootings. Terror attacks. Major corruption events. Remember the Paradise Papers Panama Papers? Everything just fade away in the blink of an eye. It's because there's literally always something new happening. And we're hearing about it often as it happens, or just seconds after, with that kind of frequency, something that happened 3 weeks ago and the news seems like ancient history. I love Steve Irwin and his death was a terrible tragedy, but when he first became popular pretty much everyone expected something terrible to happen to him someday. Nature shows at the time were mostly about filming wildlife from afar without interfering. The crocodile hunter was the first guy I remember to get in and interact all close and personal, often with creatures we viewed as very dangerous. Viewers especially loved when crocs would get agitated and snap at him. He's a ridiculously charming nature lover, but everyone who watched when it first came out basically said come look at this crazy guy, he's going to get his arm bit off someday for sure. He became so popular it basically changed the format of nature shows since. Now we have tons of proud hillbilly shows wrangling snapping turtles and whatever. I remember someone saying to my dad in the late 90s that Steve would get eaten by a croc one day. My dad just said nah, a croc won't get him. He knows crocs. It'll be something else that he doesn't know as well. Where he lets his guard down and gets too close. Lo and behold. Right? That was exactly why his death was so surprising. Because it was some freak accident that could have happened to anyone. His wife, his scuba instructor, 
Anybody could have been in the water and been shot through the heart by a stingray. Everyone expected him to be taken out doing something like wrestling a crocodile. Everyone expected him to ask for it. Essentially, it was surprising when the guy who played with crocs for a living was killed in an accident that could have happened to many different people. A transition to informality. People are leaving off formal practices, institutions and styles for a more casual approach to life. For example, more people are cohabitating instead of going through the hoops of marriage. Business dress codes are relaxing. Hierarchical institutions are going by the wayside, etc. People don't call each other unexpectedly. It's now polite to text first, or schedule a specific time to talk on the phone. I've found this is now true even in business. People email or IM to ask if it's a good time for a call, or say please call me at your earliest convenience rather than just ringing the phone themselves. Even senior management doesn't call me on a whim. This is a really good example. Part of me wonders if it's because of how frustrating it gets to play phone tag all day. I think it's an unconscious recognition of the cost of interruptions. Having time to focus is really important, and interruptions, even 10 second ones, destroy focus. Getting really deep into a problem usually takes a good 20 minutes, so calling someone and expecting them to answer is basically saying, whatever you're doing right now, would you mind starting over? Anybody remember the multitasking craze from 15-20 years ago? Yep, if anything you are working on requires actual deep attention. Multitasking is bullshit. Geeks became mainstream, and with it, so did shipping, and Comic Con, used to be more of a weird corner of the internet, now it's the standard, or maybe I just think it is because it's the only place I hang out. Shipping is pretty easy now with 2 day prime. I shipped my bed. We've stopped listening to experts and become our own experts. I did my research used to mean a thesis, now it's 15 minutes on Google. More like 40 seconds. For a whole book about this exact phenomenon check out The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. Fascinating look at how and why society as a whole has begun to shrug off the opinions of experts. Close friend is a doctor. His answer surprised me. How long it takes people to die nowadays. He was telling me about treating gunshot victims and injuries from horrible car crashes. He didn't seem phased by it. I was kind of WTF and his big WTF was how long we can keep people alive. How in many cases, it takes people years to die. He is most disturbed by this. As he put it, when he loses a gunshot patient, he knows he did all that he could to save a life but shit happens. Right? You've got to move on. It sucks, but there's little moral ambiguity about it. When dealing with a semi-vegetative person, the moral questions surrounding pulling the plug continuing treatments working with families really get to him and there are no easy answers. This is a relatively new phenomenon in medicine. Not having to take out piercings or cover tattoos in the service industry anymore. Pubes in porn sort of just started to disappear in the late 90s to where hairless or just a landing strip was the norm. It started reflecting on society too where that also became standard. They are actually starting to make a bit of a comeback now, which is interesting. I actually had a girl apologize to me once that she wasn't clean shaved. I found that unusual. BDSM seems pretty vanilla these days. The liberation of sexuality has led to a bunch of previously unspeakable sexual acts to become commonplace. Kinks like BDSM, unconventional encounters like group multiple partners, and taboos like same sex are all just kinda normal now. I theorize that the rise of more extreme taboos and kinks in popular pornography, 10 years ago, you wouldn't see stuff like incest on the most popular sections of online porn, are linked to this normalization. It might not be the same in every country, but I feel like subcultures are disappearing. Back in my day you had punks, goths, hippies, skaters, jocks, emos, dart. These days all teenagers just look so much alike. Sure you have kids that look cooler and dress more fashionable than others, but it's all blended together and the differences have become so small. I've noticed that those people exist but not as isolated subcultures. The three sport jock is best friends with a punk rock guy and dating a hippie, whereas 15 years ago, those three groups wouldn't cross paths, 21 Jump Street blamed Glee for it, but I went to high school before Glee and it was already starting to shift, 
The way my older sister talked about cliques and the way I experienced them 4 years later was very different. It's not universally true. I'm sure rigid separation exists in some places, but I think the internet is partially the reason. People had access to live out their secondary lives, say, the jock who loves to bake, meeting fellow bakers, and it extended to the real world when everyone realized everyone has secondary lives. I have an anecdote that is kind of interesting. About 10 years ago my then 5 year old son bought several games on his mom's phone. When she saw the new games she said boy's name. These games cost money. He looked at her incredulously and said how can you put money in a phone? Last week my 3 year old nieces, twins, got a Christmas card with a $20 bill in it. Excitedly, they yelled, mom. He got us a ticket. They had never seen cash before. When she told them it was money they both just studied the hell out of those bills. So in less than 10 years, there was some sort of shift in the concept of money in our family. Told you it was anecdotal. That's actually super interesting and says a lot about how culture has shifted from cash to card only. When I was a teen and had my first job, I only had an ATM card. I had to have cash on me or else I wouldn't be able to do anything if I was out. Now when I have cash I forget I have it when I am out and about. Just a couple of days ago I went to buy something at the grocery store and automatically reached for my card before I remembered I had cash. It's weird. It's really weird doesn't affect most people but the rise of the dating app is killing the gay club. Something like a quarter to a third of the gay specific clubs in the UK have closed in the last 5 years. Not because gay people mostly guys don't want some space occasionally, but that the not insignificant proportion of people who would only cruise and who kept these places alive outside weekend hours don't use them anymore. I saw a documentary or something a while back about this. It was this bunch of lesbians in NYC, and they were saying the same thing. That clubs were closing because no one was going to them. Then, and with being gay being so much more acceptable, many of them didn't feel the need for a club or location where they could go to get away from the world and be with others like them. Interesting social phenomenon. Work culture seems to have gotten a lot more toxic over the decades. When my parents were out of college, they got to choose between multiple great, stable jobs right out of college. Nowadays a person would be hitting the jackpot if they got a job like that off the bat. Pretty much every field I've seen is constant contract work, a lot of in pay time. Straight up doesn't hire a lot of people, or some mixture of the above. This is leading to people who will work more for less money, widening the pay gap between the top and the bottom. And it's only gonna get worse. It's really bad. Even as recently as 2007 when I graduated college. Things like 10% raises, 10k bonuses, 100% paid health insurance and multiple observed holidays. Think Christmas Eve, day after Thanksgiving etc. In just 10 years the standard is something like 1-2% raises, 0-1k bonus, something like 50 stroke 50 insurance, and maybe a 2 hour early release for work on days that were once holidays. It's a level of disdain of the rank and file that we haven't seen since the great depression, and it's spreading everywhere. Worst feeling is the unevenly distributed bonus. I remember a few years ago one of my co-workers came into work super excited and asked how everyone felt about the great bonus. Everyone just looked at her like she was nuts. And then it dawned on her that she was one of the only ones in the office to receive a bonus. Don't even get me started on the 2% raise. That's not even keeping up with inflation or cost of living. Yet employers try to pull the it's not an hour budget card while the owner drives away in a brand new Tesla. Kids have sleepovers with their friends way less. I don't have kids but after speaking with relatives and friends, apparently parents are allowing this less and less. People afraid of being accused of pedo stuff? What's the deal? Death of couch multiplayer. They can log on to XBLA from their home. True dis. Sleepovers were awesome because we got to stay up playing video games. Basically holding Super Smash Bros tournaments and Halo death matches into the late hours. Nowadays there's no reason to go see your friend because you can play with them online. 
One that is happening now is the death of shopping malls. The mall used to be a staple of our cultural a place where people not only shopped but also hung out and socialized. Now, malls are shutting down and the ones that are still around seem to be a shell of what they used to be. People just are not going anymore because of how easy it is to shop online instead. Where I am this is certainly not the case. Malls have adapted and shifted to suit the consumer. Most of the major malls in Toronto are now high-end malls and sell a lot of goods people might not want to purchase online. Designer clothes and luxury items that have a more personal touch. The malls here are always packed. I mean like lucky to find a parking spot packed. The entire internet shift since 4G LTE. Like on one hand we acknowledge it, but at the same time. We don't really fully seem to acknowledge how radically culture has shifted since LTE and smartphones put always connected internet in everyone's pocket. I mean, for one thing, people still say the internet isn't a necessity, but they haven't actually looked around in the last couple years to see that nearly half of the world we engage with requires the internet. We've become so plugged in that we don't even see the plugs anymore. The automation of the hiring process and how it's made getting work harder. Used to be a human being would sit down and talk with you to get an idea of your hire ability. Now we get multiple page personality quizzes that basically screen for how exploitable you are and give no feedback. Micropayments. I remember a decade ago everyone fretting how anyone would ever be able to charge just one dollar for something online. Between PayPal, Amazon, App Stores, and stored credit cards and browsers. No longer seems to be an issue. That and large platforms for selling almost anything anyone would want to pay small amounts of money for. Software. Music. Written work. ETC. Jokes are now called memes. Like all jokes. Joke stops working when you have to explain it. Meme starts working when you have to explain it. We stopped letting our kids out in public unsupervised. Crime started rising in the 70s, peaked in the late 90s, and has consistently been dropping into present day, even though we're at levels we had before the 60s. We can't imagine giving our kids the autonomy that children in the 70s had. Clowns are scary and skeletons are funny. I'm an old ducker and let me assure you, clowns have always been scary. Freely giving up your personal information, email, name, occupation, and fingerprints for starters. These giant corporations like Facebook, Google, and Apple have it all and we willingly give it to them for the most part. No one ever has to get lost ever again with smartphone maps, and I can barely remember what it was like before. I would say cell phones. Back in 2000 when I got my first one I never knew that I would someday depend on it, almost like an addiction, for everything in daily life. It really is a daily tool that we as a society cannot live without. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.